Hello my loves, today I'm going to show you how to go from short, crappy, not so fun hair to your own glamorous, volumized DIY tape-in hair extensions. Now before we get into this tutorial, I just want to do a little disclaimer. I am not at all a trained professional. I am doing this based on my own knowledge of carefully watching the process be done on myself. Now with that being said, keep in mind that you are at your own risk if you decide to do this and follow my steps for this tutorial. Make sure that you follow it very, very carefully. Carefully. And if you are still unsure, then make sure you look up even more do-it-yourself tutorials because these are at-home hair extensions, which does come with the risk of making your hair fall out if you don't do it correctly and securely. And if you are rough with them, you're going to rip out your own hair. So be very, very careful and make sure you get a brand that you are comfortable with. And today I'm going to be using Amazing Beauty Hair Extensions in 18 inches to do my own tape in. This is what the tapes look like. So it comes with a set of 20 per each. And for my head, I need exactly two packs. So I cannot get a full application out of buying one pack. I have to buy two. What I'm gonna be doing today is cutting these wefts in half. For me, I'm doing it the way that I saw in Japan, what they did on me for an entire year. And I found it was just a little more comfortable and natural. So cutting each single weft in half with tiny scissors then after that you're going to go in and slice halfway down or just about past the halfway mark so that when you fold the extension over the hair you're going to get a very more secure bond that will last a bit longer as the tape will create a sandwiching effect on the little section of hair you're going to be securing it to. The reason why you're cutting down the center is because some wefts are a little too stiff and will open up. I actually did a test round of these and noticed that when I folded them without cutting the slit down the middle that they did kind of open up later on. So cutting that slit is just going to make it a little more secure. So combing my hair and to taking a straightener, I'm just going to lightly straighten my hair. Reason being is that this is going to tame any flyaways, crinkled hairs that might get in the way of our taping process. We want our hair to be as smooth as possible while doing this so you don't get any crinkled hairs in the tape which would snag on your comb or just not create a smooth application. Then dividing your hair into small sections and rows, you're going to select a very small section of hair and a really thin section. Now this is where it might take practice because you don't want too thin of a section and you don't want too thick of a section because if it's too thick, the tape will not secure to the sandwiching effect. So each side of the tape will not connect to each other. And if it's too thin, you're most likely going to pull out your hair. So be really careful. You want enough hair that when you sandwich it, the tape will touch each other and also have enough hair to grip onto securely. So this process is something I'm gonna do around my entire head, which may seem intimidating and trust me, it is, but like I said, with practice makes perfect. The back of your head can also become really tricky to do. For me, I'm not too concerned because I have really thin hair, so it's easier for me to get a fuller look without applying it perfectly. However, if you're someone with really thick hair, you might want to get help by a friend or your mom or your boyfriend <laughs> or significant other to do the back of your head for you because if you have thick hair, it's gonna be obvious that you didn't do the back of your head. For me, I can get away with it for sure. So repeating this process around my entire scalp and trying to apply it evenly so that I have enough hair for each side and around my entire head so one side isn't fuller than the other. Just as you can see, I'm literally just sandwiching them to small sections of my hair. Of course, there are different methods you can use for doing your own tape in extensions. My way is a little more tedious, but I feel like it moves more naturally with your natural hair and it also blends a little more seamlessly when you cut them and divide them into sections of course this process is going to take about two hours to do at least for me it took just under two hours but as you can see it's really <laughs> seamless looking I mean there is some that I applied too close to the top of my head to the part at the top of my head but you know with practice makes perfect and for me, I always notice whenever I get fresh new extensions, it looks 
a little too healthy compared to my natural hair, but after I shower, it matches my hair texture pretty perfectly. So because I want this to blend a little bit better with my natural hair, because my natural hair has a blunt haircut, I'm just going to trim a little bit of the extra length off of the ends to make it blend a little more seamlessly and not look so ratty and like I obviously have extensions in. So here I'm taking off about maybe two inches, so going from an 18 inch extension application to about 16 or 15, I'd say. And then once I did the blunt cut, I just went in after and thinned it out just a little bit and that made the whole application process look a little bit more smooth, natural, and believable. Now, <laughs> this definitely is not something I recommend anyone to do if they are uncomfortable doing their own hair, not confident doing their own hair. Ask a friend to help you because it really is something you could easily screw up. And for me, I've always been someone who's done my own hair. I've been cutting my own hair for years because it's really thin and I couldn't get away with it. I've been dyeing my own hair for years and I've been using clip-in extensions for years up until recently as I've fallen in love with the concept of tape-in extensions. I think they're great. They're not super damaging on the hair. They're easy to apply and easy to take out if you're careful and uh, patient as well and the end result is just lovely. Now tape-in extensions do last anywhere from one month to two months and then once they start to fall out you can literally pick them out carefully or get a tape-in extension remover and pull them out gently and then you literally can just buy replacement tape and redo them yourself. The hair stays in a good condition if you treat it well over the, that month to two months and it's just amazing. I love tape and hair extensions so much. They're great. I highly recommend them so check out Amazing Beauty Hair you guys in the description box down below. I'm sure they have some Black Friday deals going on or deals in general. I really love the color that I have. The information on the exact product that I used from the website will be linked in the description box down below and of course remember to thumbs up this video if it helped. Give me your tips on hair extensions if you've ever done them before as I'd love to find out and of course subscribe to see more videos every single week on this channel and check out my social media to stay up to date on what I get up to. I love you guys so much and I'll see you next time. Bye!